wireless gaming gear, despite the usually higher price point and crappy battery life, is just so convenient from a desk cleanliness perspective and better mobility for keyboard, mouse, and especially a headset. And I feel like the reason why wireless headsets aren't so popular is because of price and sound quality. And I've done a massive wireless battle in the past, comparing eight headsets, most of which were well over $100, which is why I'm excited to review the HyperX Cloud Stinger Wireless, a new $99 headset that promises a solid experience, it's compatible with PC and PS4, and as usual, I will leave all my favorite wireless and wired headsets in the description below. Let's begin after this. Damn, what type of ITX system you run? And this is an ATX machine. You mean micro ATX? No, no, full-size ATX components is just a small package. It can still satisfy. The Q500L by Cooler Master, an affordable and a pretty compact enclosure for all your regular hardware with perforated exterior, a PSU bracket that shifts up and down, flexible side I.O., and awesome cable management. The Q500L, a compact frame with full ATX satisfaction. Check it out below. <laughs> So the original Cloud Stinger, the wired version, was a $50 headset and doubling the price to an already bare bones frame for the wireless version seems a bit steep, even if they're just trying to create some separation between other HyperX headsets, but the Cloud Flight, in my opinion, is still a better product altogether that goes on sale quite often. Now the direct competitor here would be the Corsair HS70 for $99 or an $89 Logitech G533 that is very plasticky but with fantastic surround sound output and the SteelSeries Arctis 7 also fluctuates around the $120 mark that is worth considering. Now the frame is identical to the original Stinger, all plastic build with metal size extensions. The plastic coating mimics that of sandblasted aluminum, which is nice, with this brushed logo texture instead of being red. And the ear cups are similar to what you'll find on the Cloud Flight, but with thinner interior fabric. They are slightly lighter at 270 grams versus the HS70 or the Cloud Flight. And I've always found their clamping structure to be appropriate for comfortable wear throughout the entire day, although sound isolation isn't as good as with the Flight, and it's actually quite similar to the HS70. Meaning the ear cups are not as soft and don't create that super seal around the ear, and I actually prefer this because it makes me really uncomfortable not hearing anything while I'm wearing a headset. It still has decent passive isolation, but uh, not what you'd find on the Cloud Flight. I love the ear cup rotation to wear the headset on your neck, and it's low profile enough and none of the joints are poking you. The volume wheel is on the right side without any scroll steps, instead it's quite smooth with good resistance. The power button with battery LED status is on the left ear cup with color-coded flashes to indicate your battery life. Now HyperX claims 17 hours of playback at 50% volume and I was able to go for around 12 hours, slightly above 50%, so it's not ideal and you'll have to get into a habit of recharging this thing uh, every three days depending on how long you game. And you can still use it while it's charged charging, but the provided cable is quite short. The USB receiver is the same found on the Cloud Flight, but with a blue indicator instead of red and Stinger wireless text on it too for identification. And if you travel, the receiver fits inside the ear cup like this. And for the wireless range, I found no interruptions in my kitchen, which is about six meters away with two walls in between. So pretty standard stuff. As for the microphone, it is non-removable, but has nice resistance upon rotation and is also muted when in the upright position. In terms of vocal clarity let me know what you think i feel like it's got a lot of signal processing going on the definition of my voice is quite poor it's got a lot going on on the lower end and um, i'm guessing in terms of trying to cancel out me typing on the keyboard so these are mx browns which are pretty quiet um, they're still being picked up yet the vocal clarity isn't really benefited. As for the Cloud Flight microphone, this one sounds better to me. Let me know what you think. I feel like the whole lower end isn't as muddy as on the uh, Stinger Wireless and just the definition overall is better. And now in comparison to the Corsair HS70, this one sounds flat in comparison to the other two. So because of it, I prefer the Stinger Wireless, even though it's very bass heavy and not as clear. I feel like even though the compression on that one is quite heavy, this one just is a bit too flat for my liking. And as a reference point among these other gaming microphones, here's what a GSP 500 sounds like. I would consider it to be the benchmark for wired gaming microphones. So just so you can compare what you're losing on the wireless side. Unless of course you go with the mod mic wireless, you can check out that video right over here. All right, so I put in some time into competitive CSGO with the Stinger Wireless. 
And overall, my performance was not any different versus when I game with the GSP 500. I didn't notice any artifacts and could pinpoint the exact direction of players because the sound cues are well defined. The sound stage is quite narrow though, and element separation for really layered stuff could be better. This is not for CSGO, but for music listening, movies, and other games. And especially the mid range detail is buried behind the base somewhere. It's super disappointing, and the lack of any driver software means you cannot adjust your EQ settings. It is very powerful output though, so volume is not really an issue, but the detail in the mid range is. If you've played EFT, you know how hearing steps on wood, glass, or metal is very important to map knowledge and enemy presence, yet with the Stinger Wireless, they were not as audible to me as with the HS70, and the overall environment felt just muted to what I've come to expect from my GSP500 or the HS70. And so the Corsair pair has sharper treble, thus appearing more detailed with much better layered separation, yet uh, still pretty close soundstage to the Stinger Wireless. But the Cloud Flight has much better texture throughout the entire range and much more detailed and controlled bass compared to these two pairs. And I'm kind of sad because the sound quality with the Stinger is pretty poor. It's muddy and lacks any mid-range definition. It's almost like listening to a low bandwidth movie that is streaming online over a really poor connection you know you expect to hear some definition and it's just it's there but you want more definition and texture in your audio and this thing just does not deliver and for 99 dollars my recommendation still stands with the corsair hs70 you're welcome now i'm going to pause right here because looking at the big data of user reviews on amazon for the hs70 it doesn't look so hot, while the Cloud Flight is a bit more expensive, but user satisfaction is higher. Alright guys, I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching, check out this other relevant content if you'd like, subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next video.